Hello, my name is Wayne Harris, and I'm the developer of the new TermPro loudspeaker enclosure design software application. Today I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is to select a driver from the library and then design a custom enclosure for that driver. When you first launch the program, this is the first page you're going to see. This is the driver library page. From this page, you will be selecting the driver you want to use when designing your subwoofer enclosure. TermPro includes a comprehensive database of the industry's most popular drivers. We constantly maintain this library and database updates are provided to our customers automatically via the internet on a periodic basis. Drivers in the library are sorted alphabetically. To find a particular brand of subwoofer, simply click on the toolbar button whose letter corresponds to the first letter of the brand you're interested in. For example, to display all of the subwoofer brands that begin with the letter H, simply click on the H button on the toolbar. Another nice feature offered by the program is the ability to favorite individual drivers. This is a real time saver when trying to locate one of the handful of drivers you use on a daily basis. To favorite a driver, simply select the driver in the list and then click on the Fave button on the toolbar at the bottom of the screen. Favorite drivers have a green background color. This indicates that they're favorite drivers. To defavorite a driver, simply unpress the Fave button for the selected driver. To access your favorite drivers, click on the Fave button on the toolbar at the top of the screen. All of your favorite drivers will be displayed in the driver selection window. For our tutorial today, we are going to use a demo woofer named Mondo Bass. We start by clicking on the Mondo Bass driver in the driver selection window. Once this has been done, you will see that all of the parameters for the selected subwoofer will be displayed in the driver data window. In addition, you can also get a feel for the type of enclosure the sub prefers by viewing the efficiency bandwidth product bar graph. In this example, you can see the Mondo base driver will work well with either a sealed or vented rear chamber. Once you've selected the driver you wish to use, click on the Enclosure Design tab at the top of the screen to begin the enclosure design process. TermPro supports 12 different types of enclosures. To select the enclosure type you wish to work with, click on the Enclosure Select button and then review each enclosure type. TermPro supports sealed enclosures, vented enclosures, single reflex bandpass enclosures, dual reflex bandpass enclosures, three chambered single reflex bandpass, three chambered dual reflex bandpass, and isobaric variations on all of these. Today we're going to select a simple vented enclosure for our tutorial. Therefore we click on the vented tab and then select the vented enclosure. One of the easiest ways to get started is to use one of the three profile buttons on the toolbar at the bottom of the screen. These are labeled Flat, Normal, and Boomer. When you press each of these buttons, the program will design a corresponding enclosure. For example, if I click on the Flat button, the program will design a subwoofer enclosure with a maximally flat frequency response. On the other hand, when I click on the Boomer profile button, the program will design a subwoofer enclosure with augmented bass response. Anytime you make a change to the enclosure design, the program will display the enclosure volume and the recommended tuning frequency in these fields right here. It will also update the graphs that are displayed on the screen. Of course, you can always make changes to these values. For instance, if I want to use a one and a half cubic foot box, I can type in 1.5 the program will update the frequency response, power handling, and cone excursion graphs. It will also tell me what the new tuning frequency should be. In this case, it's 30 Hz. When designing a subwoofer enclosure, there are really two things you're trying to achieve. Of course, the first is you want to have the maximum performance you can get. So you want as much output as you can possibly get. But you also want the system to be reliable and that means you need to pay attention to the power handling characteristics of the system. TermPro has tools that will help you maximize both of these objectives. 
So to understand how this works, I'm going to spend a few moments and show you some of the cool features that TermPro has to offer. The first thing I'd like to do is talk about the various plots that are displayed on the graph. Currently we have three plots displayed. We have the green relative response, we have the yellow power handling plot, and we have the magenta cone displacement plot. The relative response, the green line, represents the projected frequency response of the system. The yellow plot represents the maximum amount of power that can be applied to the system without exceeding either the driver's electrical power handling limit or its mechanical limit. And then finally, the magenta cone displacement plot shows the cone excursion as a function of frequency for the applied power. TermPro will always default to the rated electrical power handling of the speaker, and that number is shown up here as 150 watts. You can change that number if you'd like to see what the response characteristics or the power handling will be at a different power level. Now that we know what these plots represent, let's see how we can use them to maximize the performance and reliability of our system. The first thing I'd like to do is turn off the grid, so I'm going to come over into the toolbar and unpress the grid button. I'm also going to turn off the relative response because we're not going to look at that right now. That leaves us with the power handling and cone displacement plots. There are also two limit lines. The first one is a thin magenta line at 7 millimeters. It goes across the screen right here. That represents the rated X max of the driver. Up above that, there is a thin yellow line at 150 watts. That limit represents the maximum amount of electrical power that can be applied to the woofer without burning up the voice coil. So, let's understand why these are important. If we look at the cone excursion, you start at a high frequency and you go down in frequency, you'll see that cone excursion starts to increase. Then at the tuning frequency of the box, you'll have a reduction in cone excursion and then below the tuning frequency of the box you'll have a rapid rise in cone excursion. Well, When the cone excursion exceeds the rated X max of the driver that is exactly the same point where you start seeing these mechanical power handling limitations. So now we can see that when the cone excursion exceeds the rated X max that's the same place that we see this reduction in power handling. Now another thing that's cool about the program is it has these really powerful crosshairs. So if you position the mouse over the graph and then click and hold the left mouse button, as you move the left mouse button, you'll see that the cursors over here will show you the values actually that you're looking at. So if we come over here, I can see that we have full electrical power handling all the way down to 24 hertz but below 24 hertz we start having some mechanical limitations so at 20 hertz the maximum amount of power that we can apply to the system without causing a mechanical limitation is 57 watts term pro makes it easy to design high performance subwoofer enclosures it also gives you the tools you need to identify reliability problems before they happen once you're happy with the enclosure design, the next step is the vent design. So let's go to the top of the page and click on the vent design tab now. TermPro supports three different styles of vents. Pipes, aeroports, and rectangular ports. A 3D representation of the selected vent style is displayed in the 3D viewport. This viewport may be manipulated by using the green arrow keys in the view settings frame. For this tutorial, I'm going to stick with a simple pipe, so let's go down here to the toolbar and click on the pipe button. Alright, let's see where we're at. Our design volume is 1.5 cubic feet. Our tuning frequency is 30 hertz. We're designing a single vent with a 3 inch internal diameter. It needs to be 11.758 inches in length. That gives us a vent air velocity of 12.3% of the speed of sound. It's important to note that vent air velocity is affected by the area of the vent. Ideally, we would make the vent area as large as possible to minimize the vent air velocity. 
This is because if the vent air velocity gets too high, you could hear port noise or the vent may not work correctly. Unfortunately, as vent area gets larger, the vent length also gets longer. So it's always a trade-off to design a vent with the lowest vent air possible while keeping the vent length to a reasonable length so that it will fit inside of the enclosure. Let's experiment with our design. If we change the vent diameter to 4 inches, you'll notice that the vent air velocity drops to 6.92% of the speed of sound. But you'll also notice that now the vent length needs to be 21.8 inches in length. And that's just a lot longer than I can fit in this box that we're building. So let's change this back to 3 inches. 3 inch vent needs to be 11.758 inches long. It's 12.3% of the speed of sound. Not as low as I would like, but it's still a workable design. So now that we're done with the vent design, the next step in the design process is wood design. Term Pro supports three enclosure shapes. Those are wedge one, rectangular, and wedge two. In addition, you can also control the thickness of the wood you're using and the amount of inset for the end panels. That's done through the options control button. Currently we're using one inch thick wood and our end panel inset is half an inch. For this design we're going to use a wedge one box. So I'm going to click on W1 on the toolbar and it's important to note that the first dimensions that you see or for a golden rule box. That's a box that has minimum standing waves. So let's see where we're at. If we look up here, we'll see that our design volume is one and a half cubic feet. The driver displaces 0 0.067 cubic feet. The vent displaces 0 0.044 cubic feet. We currently don't have any bracing specified, so our total enclosure volume needs to be 1.611 cubic feet. And these are the dimensions that will give us that volume. But like I said, this is not typically what you build. So what we're going to do is enter our critical dimensions, and the program is going to calculate the unknowns. So let's say that we're going to do a truck box. So let's make the height 15 inches. So I type in 15 inches for the height. And I'll turn on the legend so you can see what I'm doing. Notice that once I typed in the dimension here, a little padlock showed up. The program assumes that if you're making a change to a data field, you don't want that field to change, and that's why the padlock is showing up. So as long as that padlock is on, the program is not going to make changes to those numbers. So now let's specify our D1 depth. So let's come over here and let's make that, uh, let's say, 10 inches. Notice how the enclosure shape changes and the unknowns change as I enter these values. Now let's make our D2 number, the number here at the top, let's make that 6 inches. And so by doing that, by entering critical dimensions of 15 inches high, 10 inches for D1, 6 inches for D2, our required width is 38.303 inches. Now before you build that box, one of the things I think is really cool is you can actually come over here and see how it's put together. And I like to do this by disabling these panels. So let's turn off the top panel or you can turn off the face and you can actually zoom in and let's see how this box is actually going to go together. And this is really handy when you get ready to build your box after you cut your wood, you can come to this screen and actually see how you put it together. So once you're happy with this design, the next step is the fabrication. And that's where you actually cut the wood. So let's go to the top of the page, click on the fabrication tape, and now we're going to see the actual blueprints for each panel that we need to cut. The first panel that's shown is the top panel. And this tells us that this board needs to be 38.3 inches long, by 4.732 inches tall. 
You'll also notice that you have to cut A, B, C, and D. That's where you saw the wood. And if you look down here in the lower right-hand side, you'll see what your table saw blade angles need to be for each of those cuts. So A, B, C need to be 0 degrees, but cut D, the table saw blade angle, needs to be set to 15 degrees. So you'll do that for each of the panels of the enclosure. On behalf of myself and WHE Incorporated, I'd like to thank you for viewing this short tutorial. For more information on our products, please visit www.termpro.com. Thanks again.